What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at a real SQL interview question asked by Amazon during data scientists and data analyst interviews. This one's marked as medium on startupsearch.com. Let's get into it. So this one's called finding user purchases and our task is to write a query that will identify returning active users. A returning active user is a user that has made a second purchase within seven days of any other of their purchases. I'll put a list of user IDs of these returning active users. The expected output will just be user IDs, just a single column. And our input table is called Amazon Transactions. It contains an ID, user ID, item, created at, and revenue. If we preview that, it gives us an indication of what it actually is. So we have IDs for each transaction, which user made them, which item they bought, when it was made, and how much revenue Amazon made on this one, which is irrelevant for this question. So let's get into coming up with a solution for this one. We just want user ID and it's based on returning active users. It does say that a returning active user is a user that has made a second purchase within seven days of any other of their purchases. It says any other of their purchases. It doesn't have to be the first purchase they make, can be whenever. So if they ever made two purchases pretty much during a seven day window, then they are returning active users, if that makes sense. So that is what we're gonna base our solution off of. And since we only have one table and are looking at a time difference, in this case, a seven day window, we're gonna use a self join. And if you see questions that mention a time difference and a time window of something happening, and you only have one table, your bell should ring and tell you to use self join based on the date column you have in there and that's what we're going to do here there are thousands of questions <laughs> that are pretty similar to this one and they all require a self join pretty much so that's what we're going to do here we're going to start off by selecting star from now from amazon transactions so we're going to call one of these a and the other one B just because we're self-joining and using just one table so it won't be confusing to use A and B hopefully and makes it quite short. So this one's called A, paste the table name and call it B. And now the key here is to pretty much get the join condition right. So what we want to establish is a user making a purchase, which we want to capture in A, that is what happens first. And then in B, we want to capture them making another purchase within seven days. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So we're joining on a.userid being b.userid just because we want to look at purchases or transactions for the same user which makes sense, right? Um, it's easy to forget that here, but yeah, makes total sense <laughs> once we think about it. So for one user, we want to look at their first purchase, then check if there's another one at most seven days later and at the earliest on the same date or shortly after that. So, going to specify a.created at here since that is the date time field. It's only a date not containing a time. So let's think about how to use date in that join condition. a.created at should be our date of the first purchase you make. b.created at should be yeah that that seven day window right seven days later. So if your purchase following the first purchase would be b.created at, then b.created at should actually be greater than a.created at or greater or equal to a.created at since you can make another purchase on the same day. And it should also be smaller than, got that here, should also be smaller than or smaller or equal to seven days later than the first purchase. So in PostgreSQL, we're gonna use this interval 
keyword to specify that we want to add a, a time interval to that date and the time interval will be seven and the unit will be days. It's just how you do it in PostgreSQL. It might be different for other SQL dialects. You might use date add or date sub with a minus, which, yeah, uh, in MySQL. But yeah, now that's not the point here. What we want to create is a notion of having another order on the same date or later than the first order, but that second order should also not be more than seven days after the first one. And since we're adding seven days to the first order here, and we're saying the second order should be on that day, seven days after or earlier, we know it has to be in that seven day window. It has to be after the first purchase and it has to be before eight days later, <laughs> yeah, uh, in the following week, so to say. Anyway, so that works. There is another special case of having two purchases on the same date. We don't have a time in the date time, so we only have the date. So let's, I'll, I'll just copy that for now and show you what I mean. We're going to select star from Amazon transactions where user ID is 110. I checked that before and saw one case where that happens. We have user ID 110 that orders bread twice on the same day. And we don't have a time here. So we don't know which one was done first. Maybe by ID, maybe IDs are signed in ascending order, but we don't necessarily know that. What I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter because one of them has been earlier than the other one and that means one of them followed the other one. It doesn't matter what order in there they are in as long as there are two of them. So if we have that join condition it'll show up as being greater or equal to the first order because it is equal to the date of the first order. So that would work already these two rows. What's actually interesting from that example as well is that since we are self-joining in this case, we would actually join the row from A to the same row in table B. Since if we look at the join condition, it would hold true for this first row, for example, since we have a greater or equal and smaller or equal condition for the dates. So that is true when looking at the first row compared to the first row. Um, we have the same user ID, which is in our joint condition. We have the same date, which would hold for this sentence or this line. And we also have a smaller or equal to date compared to itself. So if we would run this, it would just return all users since we would join all rows to itself. In order for that not to happen and to actually account for transactions on the same day that were not the same transaction, we have to specify that by using id. So a.id shall not be b.id. So that means we're not comparing rows to themselves anymore since we have that primary key of id to differentiate different transactions. And in this case, since we actually have two orders on the same date, we can compare them using this join condition now without looking at the same row twice or joining it to itself. So even if we just had these first two rows, we would identify user ID 110 as a returning active users since they have made another purchase after the first on the same date. And that would work. So if we run that code now and still add that and here, <laughs> between these conditions, we get a huge list of user IDs. Some appearing there twice because some are very active customers for which that condition might hold several times. So they became returning active users several times. They had this scenario happen more than once. So if you want to reduce that, we can just select distinct user IDs to just get a list of all user IDs that are in this table for 
those that had that happen at least once. So user ID is ambiguous here. We need to specify which table we're referring to. It doesn't matter here since we're joining on it. So it, it will be the same. But yeah, that is our output table. It's not ordered since the question doesn't specify that. But if we do that, it should give us the same ordering as the expected output. The expected output only contains the first five rows and that seems to match. So let's let's check our solution without the order by since it's not required and it is correct. Now that's it for this problem. It might take a while for you to wrap your head around these orders and why it works without having a time in there and how to not self-join the same row to itself. But once you do that, I think it's a great great question to make sure you're avoiding these edge cases and are optimizing your query to actually work for what you're trying to achieve. If you want to try this problem yourself, you can check out stratastrash.com. They have over 500 technical questions just like this one that you can solve using Python or SQL. You also have non-coding questions, over 400 of them that will help you for the other sections of your interviews as a data scientist, data analyst or anything similar. They have solution discussions here, they have hints, you can see solutions from other users and they have a lifetime membership for the premium model that is the same price as a lead code yearly membership. So it's insane value, especially for people preparing for data scientists and data analysts interviews since they only have database questions on there and, and non-coding questions. I'm gonna leave a sponsored link down below to the website if you want to check it out. I'm also gonna solve a few more of these and then probably move on to some non-coding questions as well. So if you're interested, make sure to stick around and consider subscribing. Apart from that, I wanna see you all next time. Bye.